Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chris from InkFrog. We're excited to get this webinar going. It's the first webinar of 2019, and I'm really looking forward to sharing a bunch of information with you this afternoon. I'm just going to wait about 30 seconds, and then we're going to get started, so sit tight. Okay, I just wanted to give everyone a few seconds to get settled in and uh, make sure you're all sitting down and able to listen and all that stuff. So I'm gonna get started. This webinar is gonna take approximately 45 minutes. We're hoping to do a webinar every single month for all of 2019 and it will be on approximately the 20 to the 25th of each month, depending on uh, what the work days are like and everyone's availability to put this on. There is going to be uh, no Q&A or chat enabled on this webinar. On future ones, there will be, but because this is the first one we've done in about, uh, I think, about seven or eight months, the, we're not going to have it uh, turned on for this one. But if you have any questions or comments or anything, my email address is currently shown on the screen. It is clittle at inkfrog.com. That is uh, short for Chris Little. And we're going to get started going. So a little bit about me before we dig into everything. Uh, my name's Chris Little. I joined InkFrog in 2017, and I work in kind of four different areas of InkFrog. So I'm going to go over them really quickly. So if the first thing I tackle is product development. Uh, I work with the engineers and developers to plan out new features, test them out, make sure everything's working. When things uh, don't work so well, I work with the engineering team as well to try and get them resolved. I also manage our customer support team, at least the live chat side of things. So if you have been inside InkFrog at all, or even on our website, you've probably seen the little chat button. That is nine times out of 10, you're gonna be chatting with me when that is active. It's not turned on right now, but it is on from Monday to Friday from approximately 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every weekday. I also work on the marketing side of things. So InkFrog's advertising, our affiliate programs, things like that. And then the last thing I manage is the InkFrog Designer platform. So if you are a member of InkFrog Designer and you've developed a, a customized template that was created by our team, I guarantee you've probably spoken to me at one point or another about your template because I manage the entire process. Okay, now for InkFrog, let me just get to our website. I'm gonna give you a really quick overview of InkFrog itself, and then we're gonna dig into how it works and all kinds of fun stuff here. So InkFrog is an eBay listing tool first and foremost. It was developed ooh, 15 or 20 years ago at this point. And the reason it came about was because if you have ever tried to list an item to sell on eBay, it can be a little frustrating. Their interface is not very user friendly. It's prone to errors, it glitches out. They don't make things very easy for people who want to sell things on eBay. So InkFrog, what we do is we make it a lot easier. We automate a bunch of processes. We have everything on one page for the lister tool. We can connect to different places to pull in your inventory, things like that. So we have all kinds of really amazing features. And it just takes be, uh, selling on eBay a lot easier so you can work less and sell more. We have approximately 200,000 users. And at any given point, we manage about 50 million eBay listings through our database. So that's pretty big. We are the largest eBay listing tool on the market. There are a couple other competitors out there, uh, but we're the biggest at this time. Uh, that may change, but for now, we're the biggest player. There's a couple of great places around our website that you can look. So on, if you click on products on our website, it kind of goes over the four key features of InkRog. So the listing software, which is our lister tool, that's our main feature, eBay listing templates, our store connector, and then our newest tool, which is eBay Analytics, or sorry, InkRog Analytics. I'm going to be showing you what that looks like today uh, once we go through a few other things. InkFrog has four subscription plans. So if you've never used InkFrog before, I'm going to give you a really quick overview of what these four plans involve. If you've never used InkFrog, you can get a 14-day free trial by signing up. It doesn't cost you anything. We don't require a credit card or anything. 
you just click on the little get started button and you can get going. So our four plans are as follows. We have the basic plan, which is meant for essentially new sellers. You can manage up to 300 eBay listings in your Inkfrog account, and you can link one eBay store to it. So it's it's for people who are just getting started or kind of low volume sellers. Our professional plan is for people who maybe do wholesale uh, orders or have larger quantities of products or a big variety of products. So you can manage up to 1,500 listings in your account, and you can link two eBay accounts to Inkfrog instead of one. Our third plan is called the unlimited plan. Uh, named so because you can have an unlimited number of eBay accounts linked and an unlimited number of eBay listings. So one question I frequently get asked is, can you really link a whole bunch of eBay accounts to one Inkfrog account? The answer is yes. It is very common for me to jump into a customer's account and we'll see anywhere from two to 15 eBay accounts. And in case anyone's wondering, the current Current record holder for who has the most eBay accounts connected is 1,100 eBay accounts in one Inkfrog account. Yes, I, you heard that right. 1,100 eBay accounts in one Inkfrog account. The unlimited plan also includes access to our FBA or Amazon connector. So that's uh, a really cool feature. It will let us connect to your Amazon store. If you happen to be an Amazon seller, we can download your inventory and create eBay listings from it automatically. And if you get a sale for one of those items, we can actually push the order back to Amazon Seller Central. And if you're using FBA, Amazon will automatically ship out the product to the eBay customer. So it's a great feature. The fourth plan we have is Designer. And this is where you get everything in the unlimited plan. And it also gives you access to the designer templating system. These are very professional eBay listing templates. They give you access to all kinds of ways to design your eBay listings. And we also create a professional template just for your business. So you'll have access to 250 listing templates automatically. And then I'll reach out to you shortly after you sign up for it. I'll work with you to plan out what the template should look like just for your business that no one else has. And you can try it out and get a really nice template going on all of your eBay listings. There's been research published by various companies that basically claim if you do use a professional eBay listing template, you can increase your sales by up to 30%. So it's highly worth it, especially if you are selling a considerable volume of products already, this could give you a nice big boost. We also, aside from our website, we do have two apps, not mobile apps, these are for integrations. One is with Shopify. So if you are a Shopify store owner, you can go into the App Store in Shopify and pull up the Inkfrog app, and that will connect to your Inkfrog account. The other app we have is called eBay by Inkfrog, and this is for big commerce users. So if you have a big commerce store, you can go into the App Store and basically get an app called eBay by Inkfrog, and that is a fully functional Inkfrog account. It works great. Now, if you are looking to get help from us, or assistance. This is another issue that we frequently uh, get asked is, how do I get a hold of your support team or how do I get help? There's several ways we can do this. You can contact us through our website. There's a live chat button, which I talked about earlier, which is what I usually manage. There is our customer care team, which runs 24 seven, and you can email them at open at inkfrog.com. You can also go to inkfrog.com slash help. That will give you access to all the different support tools we have. And that's something I'm going to show you uh, shortly because we just made it a lot easier to get to that page for existing Inkfrog users. Lastly, we also have a phone number. So if you ever get stuck and it's during a standard business day, we have a toll-free phone number you can call in and speak directly to a member of our customer care team. These are the people who run behind the scenes and make sure everything works properly. They're the ones who know the software in and out, and they have a direct line to the engineering team if there is a problem that they can't fix themselves. That toll-free number is 855-546-5376. It is open from Monday to Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So right now it is approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Time, so their number is open for the next two hours, and then it closes. If you do call and you get a voicemail box, please leave a detailed message with a callback number and your Inkfrog account information, and they will get back to you as soon as they can. Sometimes we get... 20 or 30 people call in and we get a little backlog so don't be offended if uh, they, they can't answer your call right away but they do try their best and they are amazing people okay 
I'm going to jump right into an Inkfrog account. This is one of our demo accounts. So when we are developing new features and such, we all of our team members have access to different test accounts. We can try out new features, test them to make sure they work. I'm going to start with a quick tour of the different sections of Inkfrog. And then we'll go into some of the key features and get through everything for you. Whoops, somebody just messaged me that my screen is not updating. Hold on. Give me one second here to figure out what happened. Hmm. Why is that not sharing? Okay, one second, people. Hold on. Let's try it. There we go. Okay. My apologies. I'm not sure why that didn't update. It should be good now. Okay. All right. My apologies. So this is uh, Inkfrog Open. This is our main platform. I'm going to go through some of the different sections, and then we'll go through a couple of them in detail during the webinar and get you through it. So everything can be accessed through the left menu. So we have the dashboard, which is the page you see on my screen right now. When you have connected a, an eBay account, which is selling a lot, it'll have your sales information here. And you'll be able to see, OK, what are the last few things you sold? What are your sales metrics for the last 30, 60, 90 days? It puts a little nice chart on here. It also puts up a nice big chart uh, at the bottom saying, here's all the different things you sold. The listings menu, which is the next one down, this is the core of Inkfrog. It's the lister tool. So we have create new listing. This is where you create a new listing from scratch. We have the library, which is a permanent repository of every eBay listing you have ever created for the history of your account. And then we also have four other sections, so live, sold, unsold, and scheduled. These four sections are basically ways of segmenting your library. So live is all the live listings you have on eBay. Sold is anything that got a sale. Unsold are listings that finished, so they uh, hit their expiry time and they didn't get a sale. And then scheduled listings are ones that are going to appear on eBay in the next however long it is that you schedule them for. Because we give you the ability to schedule anywhere from a few minutes into the future to a week or two into the future. So if you want to schedule a listing today and say, don't show it up until February 1st on eBay, we can do that. Profiles. These are kind of templated sections uh, for your eBay listings. They are your policies, as eBay calls them. We use our own policy system, but we call them profiles. So we divide them into three, four main ones, listing, shipping, return, and payment. So if you want to have a shipping profile, which says you get free shipping, you can assign that profile to all of your listings. So every single thing you put for sale up on eBay has the free shipping. And if you decide to change that in the future, you just change the profile settings and it will apply to every listing automatically that uses it. So I'm going to walk through uh, creating one of these profiles shortly. It's really easy and it makes a, a big time saver, especially if you apply it in bulk to your listings. So you can bulk apply a shipping profile or a payment profile if you need to change your PayPal account or things like that. Templates are the old and new templating system. So Inkfrog has two different template systems. The free template system is what we had until about a year and a half ago. And it's a very basic editor tool. It lets you create nice looking eBay listings, but admittedly they are not mobile friendly. That is because it was a very old system that we were using. The new system is called designer templates. And anyone can log into Designer and play around with it. You can see the 250 plus pre-built templates that we have there. And you can also create templates yourself, but you can't save them or make any changes unless you have upgraded to the Designer subscription plan. I'm going to walk you through uh, some examples of that later. Your image library. This is one of the cooler features of Inkfrog is that we retain a permanent repository of every image you ever use on eBay eBay does not do this. If you have a listing on eBay and it expires, usually after about 30 to 60 days, they delete it from your account unless you relist it. We keep a permanent copy. So if you have 10,000 images in your account that you want to keep, Inkfrog will host it for you and they will never delete it unless you explicitly delete it. We don't have a delay or a timer to wipe things out. Messages. This imports all of your messages from your eBay account. You can respond to customers directly through here instead of logging into eBay if you want or you're welcome to log into your eBay account. This just makes it a little easier so you don't have to hop between two different systems. 
Analytics is our newest feature. I'm going to walk through this a little bit later. It gives you market research data. It pulls up uh, stats on your current account. It does all kinds of really cool stuff, but it's brand new. We just launched it at the end of last week. So I'm going to save that for a little bit later on this webinar. The store connector. This lets you connect your Inkfrog account to three different websites, Shopify, BigCommerce, and Amazon Seller Central. So Inkfrog has the ability to connect to all three of these, download your inventory at each of them, and create eBay listings for you very quickly. If an order comes in for one of these items, we could push that order back to the e-commerce store it came from. So let's say you have a Shopify store. We can download your Shopify inventory. So you have 50 products in your Shopify store. We can download all 50 of them, create 50 eBay listings instantly. And if you sell one of those products on eBay, we will download the order information from eBay and push it back to your Shopify store so you can fulfill it there. If you enter the shipping information in Shopify, we download that back from Shopify and we push it to eBay. So it's all done automatically so you don't have to worry about it. So if you use Shopify and say ShipStation or another shipping company and manage all your orders there, this is perfect because it automates everything for you. Settings, I'm going to come back to this in a minute. This is probably one of the most important parts to configure a brand new Inkfrog account on. We're going to go through every single one of these in a minute, but it's basically how you set up your Inkfrog account. These are very critical pieces of information to set up properly, and we'll come right back to those in a minute. Apps is a third-party system. So these are different integrations we have. Right now we have a ShipSaver integration. We offer discounted insurance rates on all of your eBay shipping packages. It's a significantly cheaper than what you can get through eBay itself. And ShipSaver also offers uh, shipping, but it's pretty comparable to what eBay currently offers. So if you want to get really cheap insurance on all of your eBay packages, ShipSaver is an amazing platform. And then lastly, we have Need Help. If you've been using Inkfrog for any time in the past week or past few months, this button did not exist here until approximately three hours ago. We just turned it on today. And the reason we put this here is because there is actually a help button in Inkfrog, but it's not very visible. It's way up in the top right here, this little lifesaver icon up here. Not many people know that that's a help button. So we finally added this this morning. If you click on it, let me just make sure that this is still updating. Yes, this is a new help portal that we have just created. This teaches you how you can get help from us in different ways. So we have a support knowledge base. If you click on the get started link there, it takes you to uh, success.inkfrog.com, which has many, many articles written by our care team on how to use Inkfrog. It's a great resource, we highly recommend it. If you need support or technical support with your account, the best option is to email us. So just clicking on contact us will open an email in your email client. It sends an email to open at inkfrog.com, which is our 24 seven customer support team. They are an amazing team. They will help you with anything you get stuck on. If you wanna to talk to someone on the phone, they will call you. If you want help learning how to use certain Inkfrog features, they will help you. If something breaks, they will help you. The customer care team is your number one resource for getting help with Inkfrog. Book a call. This lets you schedule a call with our team. So our team, if you open a support ticket right now and ask for someone to call you, they have to do it when they are available. So sometimes they're not available right away. That's why we have the call scheduler. You can book a call with our team seven days a week and you schedule it in advance and they will reserve, I think it's a half hour window and you can ask them anything you want. You could do it all through a Google Hangout so that you guys can share screens back and forth. They can jump into your account. They can show you how to do anything you want. It's a really good learning resource. I highly recommend it if you are new to Inkfrog because they will walk you through anything you want to know and you'll see it right on your screen as they're doing it. It's very, very good. The other option is you can call our customer support team. That's our 1-800 number on the button here, 1-855-546-5376. This number is active from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single weekday. If you call outside those hours, you'll get voicemail and they'll try and return your call the next morning. I highly recommend that if you do call them, you leave as much detail as possible on the voicemail if you get it even during standard hours, because sometimes they do get backlogged and they can't answer every single call that comes in right when it does. But the care team is absolutely amazing and this is how you get a hold of them. So this new window is brand new. It literally uh, launched about three hours ago. I was really pushy with our team to get it pushed out today before this webinar, because we wanted to show it. So if you ever get stuck, click on need help. That's all you need to do.
Okay, I'm going to go through the settings. I mentioned I was going to come back to this. This is an extremely important part of your Inkfrog account, and you should take 10 or 15 minutes to go through this whenever you have deployed a new Inkfrog account, or even if you are an Inkfrog veteran, we highly recommend every six months, you just go through these and make sure that they're exactly what you intend them to be. So I'm going to click through them. I'll show you what they all do. eBay accounts. This shows you every eBay account connected to your Inkfrog account and what its status is. So this eBay account and how long the token is good for. Currently, this one expires on April 2020. So that's good for another year, year and a half. If a token is going to expire, we do put up a big warning in your account saying you need to renew your token. All you do is you come to this page and click on the little refresh icon. That basically revalidates your credentials, giving Inkfrog access to your account because eBay expires them every 12 months. So they won't let us have a permanent account link. If you want to make any changes to your account configuration with uh, Inkfrog, you just click on the little settings dial. It only pops up a few options. The main one is the auto feedback, which I'm going to cover later on, but this is how you turn it on if you want to use that feature. And if you want to remove an eBay account from your Inkfrog account, you just click on the little trash can icon. Very easy. But if you do delete an, Inc an eBay account from your Inkfrog account, it will take the listings with it. This is kind of a way that we tell customers that they can essentially reset their Inkfrog account is if you take out every eBay account, it'll wipe out all the listings from your account. So it's kind of like a way of hard resetting your Inkfrog account without having to open a brand new account. eBay sync settings. These are settings of how Inkfrog communicates with eBay for your account. So if you want to keep everything in sync, it's probably okay to leave these on as the default well, as they are already. But you always want to check through these and make sure that these make sense. There's a little icon beside each with a question mark. You just hover your mouse over it. It tells you what they are and what they do so that it's really easy. The next one is auto relist. This is a simple on or off function. What auto relist does is whenever one of your eBay listings expires, if it did not sell, we will automatically recreate the listing. It's very similar to setting up a good till canceled listing, but a lot of the time customers forget to use that or they don't want to worry about it. This thing will do it automatically for you for all of your listings. If you turn it on, it gives you a bunch of different options and configurations. So you can fully control how you want it to work. If there's only specific times and dates you want it to run, all kinds of cool stuff. So we highly recommend uh, considering using the auto relist feature. Marketing, this has three sections. The first one is purchase confirmation emails. What this does is when a customer purchases a product from you off eBay, we actually send them an email on your behalf. Here's what it looks like. Uh, I probably won't show the preview in here, but you can click on the little uh, magnifying glass to see a preview. And you could turn these on or off if you want. We also send a shipping tracking email, which you could turn on or off if you want. I recommend leaving these off if you are using our store connector and using Shopify or Big Commerce because those sites also send tracking emails. But if you are only selling directly through your eBay account, it's perfectly okay to turn these on. It's a way of sending updates to the customer. The last one is enable Inkfrog advertising. What this does is if you are a paid user, you could turn this feature off. If you're a free trial user, it's not available. By default, every listing that we create on eBay has this little icon with a, our logo at the bottom that says listing services provided by Inkfrog. If you have a paid account with Inkfrog and you don't want that to appear on your listings, you just turn this to off. And about 15 minutes later, it will be removed from every single one of your listings and they'll never appear again as long as you have a paid subscription with us. Print templates. What this does is it lets you print shipping labels or like a uh, box content, I can't even remember what the word is, sorry. But what they do is they essentially let you print off the papers that you insert inside a box when you ship them, the packing slip, there we go. So that will let you customize packing slips that you can print off for all your orders. You don't have to use these. Some customers find them really valuable, some don't. You can customize the template, you can code them up, you can do all kinds of neat stuff with them. The next one is our store connector. This is where you set up how to connect to a third party e commerce sites. So, I mentioned earlier we have three of them available we have Shopify, Big Commerce, and Amazon. So, if you want to connect to one of these stores, 
all you do is open the store connector options and click on add a store. And it's going to ask you, look, what kind of store do you want? Now, we list Magento, Evolution, and Highwire in here. They're not currently working. The three that do work are Shopify, BigCommerce, and Amazon. So if you have an account with any of those three platforms and you want to import your inventory, just click on it. It'll ask you for your uh, your login credentials so we can connect to that store, and then it'll walk you through the process. It's very easy. The last setting is staff accounts. What staff accounts do is they let you grant people sub-user access to your account. So let's say you have a virtual assistant and you want to give them the ability to create eBay listings, but that you don't want them to have full access to your eBay account. That's what staff accounts are for, to give staff limited access to eBay. The reason you may not necessarily want a VA to have full access to your account is they could go on a buying rampage on your behalf, or they might change the payment information on your, your PayPal account uh, in eBay, things like that. It, it very rarely happens, but it has been known to happen a few times. So we recommend if you're using staff or third parties to manage your eBay accounts at all, you that you use a staff account. Works great. It's available on the unlimited and designer plans. It's not available for basic or professional users. So if you want to have sub users on your account, you do need to upgrade to one of those two plans. Okay, let me just go up here. I'm gonna walk you through next of how do the lister tool works on Inkfrog. This is the core tool that uh, pretty much everyone comes to us for. It's a one-page listing tool, lets you do everything on a single page. So I'm going to actually create an eBay listing on here and publish it to eBay. It's really simple. I'm going to publish this toy. Let me just make sure that's showing up. It's Excuse the terrible photo. I borrowed it from another eBay seller just because I wanted an example. Um, I love Kill Bill. So I'm going to use this as an example. So I have this toy just for example purposes, and I want to sell it on eBay. So all we do is when we click on create new listing, we just fill out all the fields here. So which eBay account do we want to list it on? Which eBay market? So by default, it's always eBay.com. But let's say that you're listing car parts. Well, you would actually select eBay Motors. Or say you want to sell on eBay UK or eBay Germany. We connect to every eBay market. So you could select it here on what you want. Um, also, the French or the Dutch websites, if you are fluent enough in those other languages, you can list on those ones. So we're going to go through this. It's really simple. We just create the title of our listing. So I've already written these up in a little note file, so I'm just copying and pasting them. The item description, this is what people will read when they come to the listing. So this was just copied off of another eBay seller. Normally, you should write your own listing details, but uh, because I have a limited time here and I want to get through a whole bunch of stuff with you, I'm just kind of copying and pasting what I've copied from someone else. The other thing you want is the UPC code. It's not required to have a UPC code, but eBay is kind of starting to want that on most listings. Amazon kind of did the same thing uh, about two or three years ago. They started requiring you to have a valid UBC code for every listing, and now eBay is finally starting to come around on it after all these years. Images, we can upload images directly in here. We just say, I want to upload new photos. And then all I have to do is find my folder. One moment. I can just drag and drop them in. And I'm saying, okay, let's upload these five photos of the product. It's just going to take a moment. Okay, so here's our five photos that I just uploaded. You could drag and drop them so you can rearrange them. Whichever one is in the first slot, it'll say gallery. This is the main photo that appears on the search results for eBay. What you usually want is to show the full packaging on the product if you have the packaging available. So I'm going to drag this back so this one's in the first position. Now, we can look at this image and we can edit it. This is Inkfrog's new image editor tool. So we can play around with the different options. We can add text to it. We can apply a filter, which lets you do all kinds of neat stuff to it. So if you want to sharpen the colors or if you want to remove the background noise, all kinds of neat stuff. If, it's a new photo editor. We had a different one back uh, until mid-December, but then Adobe canceled uh, the platform we were using, so we had to switch over to a new one. This is it. 
we are developing new features for it, so it's not finished, but it's a great little image editor. And then we just put the price, say I want to sell this for $10. I have one unit of this. You could put the packaging if you intend to use calculated shipping. If you don't intend to use calculated shipping, you do not need to enter this information. And then it asks you for a listing profile. So in here, this is basically a category. So this is a toy. So we're going to say it's a toy. It's an action figure. And it's going to come from a TV show or a movie. You can select a second category. I believe eBay might charge an extra fee to do a second category. I can't remember. The listing format. So eBay is either auction or fixed price. Auction is you started at, say, a penny and people bid on it. Or fixed price is saying it's a flat price. Come and get it. I'm just putting fixed price for now. Good till canceled is kind of the default. But if you want to say, nope, this is only going to be available for the next 10 days, you can do that. Good till canceled, it will create it for 30 days, and then it will kind of refresh the listing after that 30 days if the item hasn't sold. You can enter a good uh, Giving Works charity ID if you want to donate a percentage of the revenue from the sale to charity. So this syncs with eBay's end of things. The condition, it's extremely important that you enter the correct condition when you're entering an item onto eBay. So this is a used item, and you always want to put a, a brief description on the condition if it is a used item just so that you're not misleading people never lie about the ebay listing condition if it's damaged and banged up put it on there the last thing you want is to get people filing a complaint against you on ebay because you can get banned if you get too many now depending on what category you selected so in this one we selected uh, tv movie and video game action figures that will determine the item specific fields so these are all dictated by ebay not by us eBay is saying these are all the different fields that are available for the subcategory. You don't have to use them all. I do recommend use as many as possible because a lot of customers do actually search on eBay for these fields using the little filter search button. So if somebody searches for action figure on eBay and then on the left side of the screen, there's that big long filter section where they can say, I only want to look for certain brands or I only want to look for certain prices or certain conditions or certain colors. Collectors are really big on that, so I highly recommend you use the item-specific fields as much as possible. Uh, for this particular item, the brand is Nika, N-E-C-A. And we're going to say the size is 5.5 inches. That's roughly how tall the figure is. Now, I could add all of these because this is an example. I don't really need to, but... It is recommended you enable all the item specifics as possible that you can find the information on. You may not be able to get everything, uh, like character family. That's pretty easy. Like this is a, a Kill Bill character. Uh, but some of these things may not make much sense. Like non-domesticated product really doesn't make any sense at all. So you can leave stuff like that out. The next section on the lister is where the item is physically located at the time of the sale. So if you're in the United States and that's where your products are, that's where you should specify. If you're in a different country, you just select it here and then it asks you for the zip and postal code. So I'm going to say this is in Miami, Florida, because that's the only zip code I actually know because I'm Canadian, not American. So no offense, I just don't know uh, American zip codes very well. You can then select a template. There are numerous templates available. If you have Inkfrog Designer enabled, you have 250. If you don't have Inkfrog Designer, I think there's five or 10. You can also create your own. For the example purpose, we're just going to leave that off for now. The next step is shipping profile. This walks you through how do you want to enable shipping? So, do you only want to ship domestically? And if so, you just specify which shipping service you're going to use. Now, if you don't know, what shipping service you intend to use to ship a product out. We do have the generic ones, which is what I usually use. So economy shipping, you're not specifying saying it's UPS or FedEx or Purolator or anything else. You're just saying it's the cheapest shipping available. So you're, that way you're not bound to using FedEx or UPS when the customer buys it. Because sometimes it's cheaper to use FedEx, sometimes it's cheaper to use UPS, sometimes it's cheaper to use USPS. So using economy shipping, there's also, I believe, standard shipping is another one you can use. They're just generic enough that 
you're not bound to using a specific courier. And you put your cost for the shipping cost. You can also specify free shipping. If you are able to offer free shipping, we highly recommend it because we found that people tend to rank higher on the search results on eBay if they offer free shipping and the best price. Same with international. If you want to offer international or not, it's up to you. If you do, I recommend just using standard international shipping so you're not bound to a specific courier. The last thing you want is to say, oh, I'm going to use speed pack and then find out that to ship uh, this item from, say, Miami to, I don't know, Moscow costs, I don't know, 100 bucks. And then you find out that FedEx can do it for 30. So you want to use the generic one unless you're really set on using one of these specific tracking options. And then you set your pricing as well. I'm just putting free shipping uh, for the sake of argument. Next up is your payment information. So how do you want people to pay you? We're going to use a profile that we created, but uh, basically you just put in your PayPal email. So I could just put, let's see, little at inkfrog.com as my payment, uh, my PayPal account if I wanted to. But instead, I'm just going to use one that we've already saved. And then returns. Now, eBay changed their return policies. So I think it was in September. They changed their return policy in their fall update saying that most categories now require a minimum 30 days return policy. There's some categories which are still allowing 14 days and some are completely exempt. But most days now, eBay wants you to use a 30 day return policy. So that's what I recommend. And you just put money back and you could put buyer pays the return shipping. Most eBay buyers are okay with that. But the big thing is how long the return window is. So. A lot of our categories now, we have removed 14 days as an acceptable return policy. That's based on what eBay said to us. So now it's either 30 or 60 days if you accept returns. I do recommend you accept returns. If you don't, you will find that you probably won't rank nearly as well as you do on eBay as you would if you accepted them. So that's our listing. It's all done. All we need to do is click on save up at the top. And then we have an option of saving it to our library, which basically just saves it in your eBay or your Inkfrog account. It doesn't push it to eBay. The other option is to save it to the library and launch, which we're going to do. So this is basically going to say, I want to sell this on eBay right now. It's saying, OK, I'm publishing it. Give it a second. So now it's saying this listing is scheduled to be launched, a lot scheduled launch time at media because I said I want to list it right now. And there it goes. When you see this little table at the top of a listing in Inkfrog, it means that it is now live on eBay. This is the eBay item number, how many you sold, if you have any watchers, and how much time is left on the listing. You can even click onto the link and it'll give you the eBay listing. So there is our little listing. God, that picture looks awful. I am sorry, but that's the way it works uh, when you rip off someone else's images. So there is Pi Mae from Kill Bill. Now I don't actually have this item. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to end it because if somebody buys this before I can end it, then I could actually get into hot water with eBay, but it's a demo account anyways. To end an e a listing, you just click on end early and it'll say, are you sure you want to do this? You just say, yep. And in a couple of minutes, that, account, that listing is now gone from eBay. So it's no longer available. Really quick and easy, all point and click base. Okay, one second here. Let me just pull up my list here. The next thing I want to show you is our bulk update tool. So this is a question I frequently get asked is, can I make changes to multiple listings at once and push it out to everything? So let's say I want to change the title on three or four products without having to edit each one individually, because that can be a bit of a time drag, especially if you want to update like 50 listings. That could be a real bummer. So what you do is you're going to click into listings and then library or live. It doesn't matter. Library is everything in your Inkfrog account. Live is what is currently live on eBay. We also put a little status column on the, li uh, the library page. I'm going to say I want to update these three products. I just select them. As soon as you check one product in the top right corner, a bulk actions button appears. This is our bulk updater. You don't click on it until you've got all the listings selected that you want to update. We can only update 50 at a time usually. 
So I've selected these three. I think they're just test listings. I'm going to click on bulk actions. And this is our bulk update window. So it gives us a bunch of options. So I can list them all to eBay. I can relist them if they are expired listings. I can edit them. I can do some options for them in the library. I can force sync them, which I'll explain on another video, I think. What we want to do is we're going to edit the listings. And we have a list of certain fields that you can edit with the bulk editor. We don't update everything through the bulk editor because certain things like changing the category can break the item specifics. They'll change which item specifics are available and not. So we, those things you have to do on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But let's say we want to change the listing title for all three. I just click on listing title. Here are the three listings. And I go, OK, I want to change these all to say testing. So I've changed the title for all three of these. I just click Save All Modified. Give it a few seconds. And it puts a little check mark besides each of them as it finishes. So this is a really quick and easy way to bulk update products for most fields. Not all fields, but most fields. So it works great if you're changing titles or changing templates or profiles or, say, your PayPal account or all kinds of stuff. This is the fastest way to do it, especially if you have hundreds of listings. You can touch every single listing in your account in two or three minutes instead of spending hours doing it. It's a great tool. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is our store connector. So I mentioned this earlier. This is where you add a Shopify, BigCommerce, or Amazon store to your account. So I've already connected a few to this account, so I'm not going to walk through the process, but it's basically when you click on that, it'll just ask you to verify the connection. Really simple. Once you've got the, the store connected, it shows up on here. So we have uh, inkfrog.myshopify.com is one of our plates of stores. If I click on it, this will walk us through the import process, saying, OK, you want to import some products from your Shopify store. So I have this Shopify store right here. And I have a couple of products loaded into it, including that really ugly Kill Bill figure. And I want to import that from Shopify. I'm just going to say manually select which products. You can say import everything if you want. But I'm just going to manually select one product, which is the Kill Bill figure. I'm going to say I want that one. And that's it. And then you just click on Next. It's really easy. It'll say, hey, there might be a few problems here. The ones that show the little yield sign you need to fix something with. So we click on it. It pulls it up. And the problem that we had with this one is we have this product already in Inkfrog because we just created it. So we can say map it to an existing listing, or we can break that link and create a brand new listing. It doesn't matter either way. I'm just going to say we're going to map it to that listing. And there it is. So it's now mapped to the listing that we already created. The reason to do this is if you have a bunch of eBay listings that already exist in your Shopify store, this lets you kind of link them together so you can keep your inventory in sync. OK, that I believe is all done. Then we just click on import and list in the top. And we can even say import and list to eBay right now. I'm not going to do that, but we're just going to import it. And it only takes a minute. There we go. We've imported it. So now if I go back to my library, we still only have the one Kill Bill figure because I mapped it to the existing one. If I click into this, what it shows us now at the top is this product is now associated with an item on Shopify. And it says, here's the Shopify ID. I can click this link, which will take me into the Shopify store, which will go right to this page, I believe. It says when it was pulled in, when it was updated. Now what I can do with this is I can push this to eBay and create a listing. Really easy to do. I already showed you how we do that. We just click on Save and Launch. And what that will do is you now have a mapped product from Shopify onto eBay. And if, an item, if that item sells on eBay, we will download the order information from eBay and push it to your Shopify store. So it'll show up as an order in your Shopify store. And then in Shopify, you can enter the tracking information once you ship it out. We will download that from Shopify, and then we'll push it back to eBay so eBay sees that you've shipped the item out. 
It's a really great tool. It lets keep everything in sync. Now, sometimes with Shopify or Amazon or Big Commerce, you want to change how that flow of information works. Sometimes you want to say, no, don't keep everything in sync or don't keep our titles in sync or anything like that. Because by default, we will use the same title that your Shopify store uses. We'll use the same description. We'll use the same pricing. And we keep that in sync. Every 10 or 15 minutes, Inkfrog will actually connect to your Shopify store. It will check the pricing, the title, the photos, everything. Make sure that what Shopify is reporting matches what Inkfrog is reporting. If it finds a discrepancy, it will actually download updated product information from Shopify by default. So this can be a bit of a headache for some people because if you want a different title on your shop or your eBay listing than your Shopify listing, you have to disable that feature. And the way you do that is you go into the store connector for your store, you click on settings, sync settings. This controls the entire behavior and relationship between Inkfrog, eBay, and your Shopify store, or your big commerce store, or your Amazon Seller Central store. And you just go through, and you see how it behaves. By default, it works great, but some people have different requirements. So you might say, I want to sync all my inventory. Great. But I don't want to sync the title. By default, that is on from Shopify to Inkfrog. So if this is turned on, which it is by default, if you change the eBay title in Inkfrog, it will get overwritten by Inkfrog about 15 minutes later with the Shopify title. If you turn this off, you could change the title in Inkfrog and not have it worry about overwriting it. The same with the description, the same with the pricing, the same with everything that we have about it. You can also fly, apply a flat discount or a change in pricing. Otherwise, it'll always try to match it. Or you can decouple that pricing sync automatically. So the pricing that you set in Inkfrog does not uh, be based on what your Shopify store has. So let's say I was selling that action figure for $25 on my Shopify store, but I was willing to sell it on eBay for $10. By default, Inkfrog will try and keep that $25 price that your Shopify store is going unless you have the sync price disabled, which is... Sync pricing from Shopify to Inkfrog. We have it turned on on this account right now, but if you want to have different pricing on each platform, you just turn that off. Otherwise, it'll keep resyncing it every 15 minutes. That is the store connector. I suggest you spend some time digging through the different options in the sync settings when you first connect to store just to make sure it works the way you expect it will. Every single item has got a little question mark and it explains what that field does. And if you ever run into trouble or you don't know what uh, you're doing or you get stuck, just click on need help. You'll pop open our help window and you can talk to our support team. Always ask for help if you don't know what you're doing. That's what we want. That's what we're here for. We have a large team of support staff in place just to help you. The next thing I want to show you is Inkfrog Designer. So I mentioned this earlier, Inkfrog Designer is a eBay listing template system. They are mobile friendly templates. They're professional templates. We provide you with 250 right out of the box that you can start using on day one. And we also create a custom one just for you when you start up with Inkfrog. So let's say that we want our eBay listings to look really cool. Like let's say that we're selling pet products. Well, we have this pet store one. This is one of my favorite templates. I always like the, the pictures and the imagery we used on it. So this is what your eBay listings will actually look like. So this is the item title. It shows some placeholder content on here when you're in designer, but when it gets pushed to eBay, it, it fills it with your item details. The product photos, you can add some extra information to it. You can put sales on here. You could put cross-selling. So cross-selling is a really powerful feature of designer. It lets you link out to anywhere from four to 20 other products on your account. It shows images, and if people click on it, it takes them to that other listing. It's a great way to sell more products on eBay. And we also put like what your shipping policies are, your payment policy profiles, things like that. You could do all kinds of really neat stuff with designer templates that you can't do in the legacy template system. Once you find a template that you like, you just click on back to editor. This takes you into the, the designer edit tool. And you can make any changes you want here. It's uses what a what you see is what you get editor or what W Y I S Y G editor. 
this is basically point and click. So you can click on anything and you can change it. So I just clicked on this photo. I could change it. I can add a color to it. I can add borders to it. If I want to change, say, this title, I could change the font. Let's say I want to make it Oswald font. That's a really common one that people seem to use a lot. And I want to make it gigantic. Well, I can make a gigantic title on there if I want. And once I'm happy with it, I just click, OK, I'm good. You can play around with this a whole bunch for free without having to actually sign up to the Inkfrog Designer. There's all kinds of neat features and widgets and tools in it. And there's a lot of flexibility in it. If you do not have a designer subscription plan, though, you can't save the changes and you can't save a template to your account, which is how you have to use it. Once you're happy with the template, you just click Save As, and that'll keep a copy in your account. And when you're making changes to it, you just click Save Template. It's like hitting the Save button in Microsoft Word so that any updates you leave are changed on the template. Once you have saved a template, to, a designer template to your account, they are available in the listing tool. So if I go back to our listing library and I click on that Pi May action figure that I was trying to sell, I scroll down through the listing details and near the bottom is the template section. And it'll be in here somewhere. So I could say, I wanna use the Electronic Shops One template and I could preview it. And now that I have that selected, so I've selected Electronic Shop One as the template. If I click Save and List right now, it'll publish it to eBay with that template on it. So they do look a lot more professional than just the text with black and white text on there. You could do all kinds of really cool stuff with them. I'm actually going overtime on our webinar right now, so I'm going to try and get through the last few sections I wanted to cover, and then we'll let you get on with the rest of your day. So there's two more things I want to show you. One is auto feedback. This is a feature we introduced back in the summer. And what it does is when a customer purchases an item for you and once they pay for it, you can automatically leave feedback for them on your account. This is something eBay really encourages is always leaving feedback for every sale. They actually email you and bug you and put on the little checklist in your seller dashboard in eBay if you don't do it. So to enable automatic feedback, it's only available on the unlimited and designer subscriptions. If you are on one of those plans, you're gonna click on the settings, eBay accounts. And then all you do is edit the settings for your eBay account in particular. So you don't have to edit it for, or, or enable auto feedback for every single eBay account. You can maybe turn it on for one or you can turn it on for all of them. It's up to you. We're just gonna open the settings for our eBay account. We're gonna say turn auto feedback on, which is the third setting here. And we put in five comments that are kind of placeholder ones. You're welcome to use these or you can create your own. When the system leaves feedback automatically for your buyers, it will select one of these at random and post them to the buyer's account. So you're welcome to change these, do what you want with them. We just use five generic ones as placeholders. I've Most people that use auto feedback I've seen have put custom feedback in there. There's really no limit on what you can do there. I mean, you can't spam your website link there or anything on there to pull people off of eBay. But you can say, oh, you're the most fantastic buyer in the world ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you, or whatever you want to make your customers happy. And it'll just randomly select from one of these five every time that you get a payment for an order on eBay. The last thing I want to show before we wrap up today's webinar is analytics. This is a new feature. We launched it at the end of last week on, I believe, Thursday afternoon, or maybe it was Friday. This is a combination of a market research tool and a sales tool. It is extremely powerful. It is comparable to, to Terapeak, if anyone is familiar with that. It is a great platform. I'm just going to show you a couple of the features because uh, I can't go through everything. I think we'll probably do a dedicated webinar to analytics maybe in February or March where we talk about nothing but the analytics tool for an hour because it's very in-depth. But I'm going to walk you through a couple of the reports. We're going to start with the hot products report. What this does is it tells you what is selling really, really well on eBay for the last 30 days. And it gives you some great sales stats saying, well, let's take a look at this iPhone 6. What is this? Uh, a lightning charger for an iPhone 6. Over the last 30 days, there has been 11,700 of these sold 
for a whopping three British pounds or two dollars, two pounds, 45 pence. May not seem like much, but if you're getting these for 10 cents, I mean, you're making a fortune. So this shows you a lot of products. You can limit it down saying, well, I want to sell, I don't know, let's say Harry Potter stuff because my daughter loves Harry Potter. So here are some of the top selling Harry Potter items on eBay for the last 30 days. So not surprisingly, it's the DVD set is the big one. The Complete 8 Film Collection has sold 1,400 copies. Uh, there are the collectible figurines. There's a birthday party package, which sold 408 of them. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, the Fantastic Beasts, the... This is the advent calendar, so all kinds of stuff. So all the different Harry Potter brand products uh, that have sold on eBay in the last 30 days and some of their key stats. So we can see a pretty big sales drop off here. The top one is uh, 1,400 sales in the last 30 days. And if I go down towards number 30 or 40, or I guess 20, sorry, we're down to like 50. So that's one or two sales a day instead of 30 or 40 sales a day. So you can use this to kind of figure out what are potential hot products that I could be selling on eBay. If I go back to iPhone cases, cell phone cases are massive, massive business. It's You don't make a lot of money per unit, but you can sell a ton of them. So iPhone, which is, I believe, the most popular uh, phone in the world still, there are tons of them. And unlike with the Harry Potter stuff, we see we had 5,000 for the, the number one selling item, uh, 5,000 units sold. If I go down to number 20, it's still at 1,600 units sold. That's for one model of a particular phone case. So this is a great research tool. It shows you all kinds of interesting stats about it. So it gives you an idea of what are potential sales volume I might be able to expect if I was selling something similar and I had a really optimized listing and I had a power seller status. Another thing I can do is I can look at competitors. Let's say I want to sell iPhone case again. This shows me who the top sellers are for that type of product. So for iPhone cases, it looks like Storm Dash Buy is one of the top sellers on eBay with 3,500 units sold of this fancy little case here for $6. It's not a high ticket item, but you can use this to click on to their eBay account. And you can dig through, well, how are they building their listings? How are they promoting their sites? And you can take a look around and do some competitive research. It's a great research tool that shows you what people are doing that may be different from you and how you can optimize your listings. So it's a great way to figure out ways to sell more on eBay. The analytics tool is a premium add-on. It's the first one that InkFrog Open has ever had. It is available for a 14-day free trial. Once you get past that 14 days, you get locked out of it unless you pay the subscription fee, which is $45 a month. But it's a great research tool, and even if you don't intend to ever pay for it, I do highly recommend you try it out for the next two weeks. It's not going to cost you anything. We will not automatically bill you. You have to actually go in and explicitly click on, yes, I want to keep this. Once the trial expires, it will kick you out if you don't. So it's a great product. We're going to be adding more features to this over the coming weeks. I put up a detailed blog post of it. We've got it on the Inkfrog website as well, which explains some of the cool things you can do with examples. So there's on the sales site, if you click on products, eBay research, it'll walk you through, hey, here's some of the cool things you can do with it. It doesn't hurt you to try it. I do recommend it highly. It's a great platform. And there's a lot more features in development for it coming. All right, folks, I have been talking for approximately 60 minutes straight at this point for 15 minutes over time. That's why we didn't do a live Q&A this time. I hope you learned a few things. I hope I was able to help you a bunch. And again, if you ever get stuck in InkFrog or you need help or you don't know what to do, please click on the Need Help button and click on one of the options on that resulting page. We're here to help you. Um, again, my name is Chris Little. I'm on the product development and marketing side and customer support side, and I wear about a million other hats here. If you want to reach out to me directly, my email again is clittle at inkfrog.com. And if I can't help you, I will connect you with the person who can, but I do recommend you talk to our customer care team first because most of the time they will fix your, any challenges you're having. They are the best support team in the world for stuff like this. 
and they are available 24 7. You can reach them at open at inkfrog.com. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on our next webinar in February. Have a wonderful day.